Hey guys, in this video, I wanna give you some of the best science back tips for treating and preventing skin cancer. Before we get into the tips and remedies, I wanna quickly overview the metabolism of cancer with you. So that way, through understanding the metabolism of the cancer cell, we can learn two important things. What it eats and the environment it needs to thrive. And through modulating both its diet and its environment, we can effectively kill cancer cells. So there's really one simple thing I want you to understand about the metabolism of a cancer cell and its environment. I won't dive into depth about the metabolism of cancer, but it should be incredibly helpful for you to understand the difference between a normal healthy cell and a cancerous cell. So the metabolism of a normal healthy cell is very similar to your metabolism when it's healthy, which is often referred to as oxidative metabolism or oxidative phosphorylation. And the basic chemistry of that form of metabolism is that your cell uptakes glucose, it oxidizes it, and turns it into pyruvate, and pyruvate is turned into acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA ultimately becomes ATP. And under oxidative metabolism, up to 36 ATP are created, with the byproduct of that metabolism being carbon dioxide, which is not only protective, but it creates an alkaline environment in the body. So looking now at the cancerous cell, the basic difference between cancer cells and normal cells is that cancer cells are highly dependent of glycolysis, which is the reserve metabolism, often referred to as stress metabolism, given its inefficient nature in producing energy. So the cancer cell, through glycolysis, uptakes glucose, it doesn't oxidize it, and instead, through biosynthesis or fermentation, it turns it into lactate. Then from that point, the lactate or lactic acid is pumped or pushed out of the cell into the extracellular or surrounding environment, creating a very acidic micro environment in which cancer cells and tumors can thrive. So to simplify everything I've said so far, the basic thing that you should understand is number one, cancer cells don't feed off sugar. And in fact, they can't even properly oxidize it and instead have to ferment it and create lactate in which it pushes into its environment to create an acidic environment to live. So the basic takeaway is that cancer doesn't feed off sugar, it feeds off the lactic acid or the acidic environment surrounding the cell under poor, inefficient energy production, often referred to as glycolysis or the stress metabolism. Now I think all of this information, though seemingly trivial, is really important to understand how to treat cancer because ultimately the cure is in the cause. Not to mention through understanding this basic nature of the metabolism of a cancer cell, we've learned something imperative. In the words of Dr. Warburg, a cancerous cell, nor any other disease state, cannot thrive in an alkaline environment. Cancer cells need an acidic environment in which to live, and that acidic environment is created primarily by the stress form of metabolism referred to as glycolysis. Now with all of this in mind, I have a handful of helpful, proven therapeutic natural supplements and everyday household items actually that can effectively kill cancer cells by targeting at the root. And the first cancer killing substance I want to talk about is baking soda. So sodium bicarbonate, everyday baking soda, you probably have some in your fridge. And the way that baking soda works to kill cancer is actually really simple now that you understand the metabolism of it, which is that baking soda helps to create a very alkaline environment in which cancer cells basically cannot live thrive or proliferate. So as we learned earlier, cancer cells are highly dependent of glycolysis and the production of lactic acid to create the highly acidic extracellular environment they need to live. And baking soda being naturally alkaline, very alkaline, helps to raise the pH of the acidic environment, making it more alkaline, therefore making it impossible for cancer cells to live. That brings us to our second natural remedy, which is the use of the antioxidant flavonoid known as apigenin. Now, I talk about apigenin a lot because it's highly therapeutic, and you can find it in everyday foods like button mushrooms, agar kiss mushroom, and the medicinal mushrooms. You can find it in celery, parsley, and foods like guava, amongst others. And in regards to skin cancer, apigenin is incredibly therapeutic stuff. In fact, looking at one study on apigenin's ability to inhibit the proliferation of skin tumors, apigenin was found to significantly inhibit the skin papillomas 
and showed a tendency to decrease the conversion of papillomas to skin carcinomas. In addition to that, apigenin has a variety of other studies on its ability to prevent skin cancer and treat skin cancer, mostly through its antioxidant effects and its anti-inflammatory effects. The next natural remedy for treating skin cancer is caffeine. So caffeine works in a variety of ways to prevent skin cancer. Taking internally, caffeine helps to boost the metabolism by synergizing with progesterone and thyroid. So it sort of acts or mimics thyroid and progesterone, which is incredibly helpful for treating cancer because it is ultimately the thyroid hormone which drives oxidative phosphorylation or oxidative metabolism into production of carbon dioxide. So when your thyroid is impaired, you often shift to these more reserved forms of metabolism like glycolysis, which can lead to cancer if you're in that state chronically. So caffeine, in other words, helps to boost thyroid function, ultimately increasing the production of carbon dioxide, ensuring you're in oxidative phosphorylation as opposed to dipping into these reserve metabolisms associated with cancer. In addition to taking caffeine internally, there's some really interesting uh, information and studies on the use of caffeine topically in acting sort of like a natural sunscreen. So referencing the study now, first off, it does state that the oral administration of caffeine for several months inhibited the formation of skin tumors. However, additional mechanical studies found that topical application of caffeine stimulated UVB-induced apoptosis or programmed cell death, as well as apoptosis and UVB-induced focal hyperplasia in tumors and tumor-bearing mice. To summarize, both orally ingesting caffeine, so drinking coffee for example, or applying caffeine to the skin topically is a novel inhibitor of sunlight-induced skin cancer. Now I think that this is really amazing information because caffeine, like baking soda, is really cost-effective and it's easy to obtain. Not to mention the fact that caffeine can act sort of as a natural sunblock is really beneficial because most conventional sunscreens or sunblocks to actually increase the risk of skin cancer, likely due to their toxic nature and the fact that a lot of them have a base of polyunsaturated fats that when oxidized actually lead to the development of skin cancer through lipid peroxidation. So the use of caffeine for treating and preventing skin cancer is very therapeutic in a variety of different ways. So that brings this video to a close. These are just three very helpful, clinically proven, natural substances that can help you prevent skin cancer and potentially even treat skin cancer by inducing programmed cancer cell death. Again, to recap, you have your everyday baking soda that you can find in the grocery store for about 99 cents a box. I'd recommend getting Bob's Red Mill baking soda to ensure that's aluminum free. Otherwise, baking soda, very cost-effective, affordable, and therapeutic remedy for skin cancer and cancer in general. Secondly, we have apigenin, which is a profound antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer substance that you can find in everyday foods like celery, parsley, and you can find it in herbs like chamomile and agaricus mushroom. In addition to that, perhaps the fan favorite, we have caffeine, which of course you can find in green tea and coffee, and that's a profound anti-cancerous substance. It's an antioxidant, but it also acts as a natural sunscreen, protecting the skin from UVB-induced radiation and inflammation. Anyways, that does bring the video to a close. If you guys found it helpful and you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for future videos if you haven't already. And for learning more or additional information, be sure to check out our online tonic herb shop and our blog in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.